Hi, today I want to talk about my mental health. Um, I've actually blogged about my, my mental health for a, quite a while and I know I mentioned in my welcome video that as well as the fibromyalgia and the hypermobility syndrome I also have anxiety, depression and OCD. I've been through about three lots of CBT to try and help with these mainly to help with the anxiety and depression um, and there's been little success to be honest it's only recently I've been trying to been able to figure out a little bit about why it doesn't work for me and I know um, it's probably part of my personality but I put a lot of pressure on myself I'm a real people pleaser and I've been that way for as long as I can remember and um, in some ways it's helped you know being there for friends and stuff like that and becoming organized just getting stuff done but I put a lot of pressure on myself to the extreme so it also means that I get very stressed out and that and I feel guilty about a lot of things you know I constantly worry about letting people down like um, losing friends because I've let them down or especially with the um, mental health services there's always that thing where it's like won't engage so I always think oh well if I don't get better because of this task that I'm doing in CBT then I'm not trying hard enough I'm not engaging because for my conditions and um, CBT is the evidence-based approach and so it's supposed to work but of course everyone's different but um, recently, after about a year of avoiding mental health services because it felt like nothing was going to work and I was safe enough um, on the medication I'm on, um, I take sertraline at the highest dose and an as needed uh, medication, I take diazepam. That's usually when I'm very suicidal or really really panicky it's the only thing that just sort of helps just calm me down a little bit or just helps me sleep and this time I was with a different mental health team because I moved out of the area and um, it took a while to really get up the courage and it was mainly a nudge from my mum after I had a bit of a breakdown that um, that led to me asking for help and I found it very difficult too as well. I've actually written down some notes of the therapy session I had today. It was my first one and um, going by my telephone appointment before I thought it was going to be CBT yet again. This would be my fourth time doing CBT and I really wasn't looking forward to it. The therapist on the phone um, said that I should try it again you know maybe different therapists that will work this time you know so I kind of reluctantly agreed to go through it again and I was told that if it doesn't work for me then I can always let them know and they'll try and find another therapy for me which was a lot better than the old um, the old mental health team in the, the old area I lived in because they said for your conditions what you're diagnosed with it's CBT or nothing basically so I wasn't given that choice of therapy that you're supposed to have really and um, staying around I want to talk about my first therapy session this time around now it was completely different to what I expected it really was um, instead of seeing an actual psychotherapist um, the guy I saw was a mental health nurse so I found that quite surprising and he's not actually pro trained in CBT, he's trained in some other therapies. Um, so st straight away he was just asking me how I felt. Um, of course I had to do the questionnaires for anxiety and depression and phobias. So the depression one is the PHQ-9 I think. And there's the GAD, I'm not sure what number goes with that though. So that's sort of to quantify how you're feeling and um, how you're progressing if you are. It, yeah, I suppose they have to get a kind of clear idea of how much you've improved if you have at all. 
but it is very rigid, you know. I'm not sure many people completely fit those boxes. And now a lot of the time I'll have like a score on something, but I want to say, but this. <laughs> but of course there's no space to, you just have to go by what the um, questions are asking you. Right, so um, after doing that questionnaire, he just asked how I felt and I was already on the verge of a panic attack at that point, so I was finding it very difficult. I was trying to concentrate on breathing and get myself a bit calmer. Um, so I guess it was the anxiety and the panic I was focused on most of all, so I started talking about that. And I can't completely remember what I said after that, but it must have been rambling, as I think I'm doing now because I'm quite nervous talking about it. But yeah, um, I... It's ridiculous, but I, sound, I felt really self-conscious. I mean, it was about me, and I don't really like drawing attention to myself. <laughs> it's funny, I I post a lot of selfies and stuff, but so you'd think that I'd want to show myself to the world and that, but no, I don't really. I don't really like talking about myself that much, but I feel I feel I have to for my own good, you know. And um, so we went through. And here's a trigger warning for suicide and self-harm here. Um, went through um, the suicidal feelings and um, the fact that I self-harm and have done for quite a while. It's just in different ways. I don't really want to go into detail with that. I just want to mention that that is what I do. And um, we talked through how I felt about myself. And he, the therapist, no, the mental health nurse basically um, said that I'm very cruel to myself, like I don't like myself very much and I put everyone else before me, I'm like bottom of the pile and I agree with that you know, um, but it's very hard to hear, you know, it's, it's kind of like oh right, you know it's like you suddenly being slapped in the face with those, yeah <laughs> and also, he asked for what my problems were with CBT, why it didn't, he, why I felt that it didn't work for me. And I was talking about the pressure again. And with CBT, you get certain tasks that they call homework. Um, it could be about doing a thought diary, like how you're feeling that day. Getting used to do more activities that you enjoy and that make you feel like you're achieving something. So, um, if you play a musical instrument, I suppose it maybe do that on, on a day so you enjoy it and you're practicing so you're getting a bit better, you're achieving something. So, something like that. Um, but because I put so much pressure on myself, I feel as if no matter how down I am, no matter how anxious I am, I have to force myself to do the tasks. And, um, it doesn't actually benefit me when I do that because it's more like I'm just doing a task to please the therapist. I'm just completing my homework because I worry about what will happen if I don't. You know, I'll think that they think that I'm not engaging um, and that I'm just not trying to get better. <laughs> it's just, it's silly. I mean, it's, it's hard. <laughs> You know, it's hard. Um, but yeah, the CBT is a big part of that, is the homework. And it did feel like, I mean, in my experience, it's not going to be for everyone, but it felt like, um, blaming myself, it's like, sorry, this is my cat. <laughs> felt like I was blaming myself for not doing stuff. Um, for having certain negative thoughts and that it's all like it's all your fault you know and it's it definitely doesn't play into the doesn't help when you already don't like yourself very much because it's just more things more negative things make you feel crap about yourself Um, uh, it's also a lot of the issues like mental health issues that I have stem from things in the past and um, I was bullied for about 10 years um, yeah just a lot of things happened in the past and I think it has a big effect on how I am now 
And of course, God is focus on the here and now as well, like how I'm feeling now, what my behaviours are now. But I think we also need to delve into what has led to this, you know, what's caused this or exacerbated this. I can't just ignore it and push it to one side. I mean, that's what I've done before and that's why I avoid a lot of things. And I shouldn't, you know, that's one of my problems that need to be addressed. Um, so yeah, after hearing what um, my problems with CBT, that kind of thing, he and the way I talk about things, the way I feel about myself and stuff, he reckoned that CBT really, it wasn't working for me, you know, I've been through it three times, he actually said I'd been CBT to death, <laughs> so there you go, <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty exhausting, so yeah, um, yeah, so it said the first thing we want to focus on is I need to be kinder to myself and I need to focus on myself a bit more like be okay with having attention on me you know it's okay for me to talk about how I feel it's okay for me to um, feel good about myself or be kind to myself I, I'm saying this and I'm still trying to believe it and still can't but um, yeah it's that feeling I deserve to be okay <laughs> You know, I can't keep punishing myself all the time and thinking about myself as a bad person. Um, so, the kind of therapy he suggested and that I get to make the decision on next time I see him and this month is interpersonal therapy. Um, I guess something you could Google. I've not quite read up on it properly just yet, so... I get the gist of it, but apparently it's quite the opposite to CBT. There's a lot of focus on um, sort of how you're feeling, uh, like the depression side of things. It's apparently a lot to do with depression, and it's also to do with how you interact with people, how how the way you are feeling affects your relationships with family, friends, that kind of thing. And that's something we've not really explored before. So, you never know. I mean, it's different. I feel a bit hopeful about it. So, it's worth a go, isn't it? You know, I'll just see how this works, see if it is fitting me. But I have a feeling it will fit me more than CBT did. And maybe with this type of therapy, I won't put as much pressure on myself. So, that's definitely a plus. Okay, so some of the little activities it got me to do that tied in with the conversation like and um, I said how I was feeling at that moment because I was very panicky um, he wanted me to focus on um, how I'm feeling physically you know but as well as like of course I've got physical health problems so considering how my mental health impacts on how I'm feeling physically and he sort of went from head to toe and he was like how's your head feeling at the moment what sort of feelings are you getting and because I haven't really focused on it I mean I, I just try and dismiss it I suppose and I try and ignore how I'm feeling physically because I don't want it to show really um it's like I'm making my invisible illnesses more invisible because I just don't want to worry anyone or, or draw attention to myself but anyway yeah so I was saying um my head I feel quite sort of spaced out quite dizzy a lot of pressure on my head it's almost like someone's going like that on my head and it just feels like my head's so full of thoughts I just want to escape and he found that very interesting and when they say that's interesting I worry I'm like well what do you mean by that <laughs> and then went down to neck shoulders etc etc and then <laughs> hi <laughs> this is my cat Billy hello this is a good distraction. <laughs> hey, you're on camera. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to know what I'm up to. Okay, let's sort this out. So there was that. Um, there was also breathing exercises. A thing called tactical breathing. What you do is you breathe slowly in for four and you breathe out for seven yeah and he sort of demonstrated it 
and then he got me to do it just um, by myself so he was watching me doing the tactical breathing and <laughs> I was trying to do it but I was finding it very difficult to calm down because um, I was aware of him watching me <laughs> I don't like being stared at that kind of thing so it makes me very aware of what I'm doing am I doing it right do I look weird um yeah stuff like that so although I did it I felt like I was doing it wrong you know I wasn't doing it properly <laughs> and I um tried to explain that to him trying to be more open about like how I'm feeling right now you know no matter how weird it's weird it sounds or how confusing it sounds I just have this like thing where I feel like I have to make the therapist's job as easy as possible for them but it's not really my job to do that it's about me um, approaching them and talking about how I feel I don't have to keep being polite or trying to help them help me you know I'm it's not like that, it's different. So this is also got to, what I've got to work on. Yeah, so it's very, very different to previous therapy sessions. It wasn't quite as rigid, it was more like a conversation. And I suppose it's a bit more like an assessment, which is probably a good thing. I feel like I had to go right back to basics and, okay, this is how I felt, you know, where do we go from here? So, oh, you also asked what medication I was on, whether that was helping because of how um, severe the depression and the anxiety was. Um, and you also asked me, like, when you're panicking and that, what do you do? You know, how do you help yourself? And when you're really nervous, it's like your mind just blanks. Um, I was saying, like, I know there's things I need to do, but I keep forgetting what I need to do. So I was just trying to rack my brains trying to think of what I needed to do and so I suppose I thought just do what I can to keep calm do some breathing exercises you know maybe let him know how I'm feeling you know what he's there for <laughs> so, yeah. right. just seeing if there's anything else I forgot to mention I have written down a lot of notes here Oh yeah, see as um as I was talking through things and rambling and digressing and stuff, um he was telling me what impression he got of me. <laughs> um and he used certain terms. Uh apparently I'm the anti Donald Trump, which I said that's not a bad thing. I don't want to be anything like him. He's a horrible person. Because no. Um, you say I was like that because I put everyone before me. I don't like to draw attention to myself. I want to be kinder to everyone else rather than myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, apparently I'm my own bully. So that's great, you know. Ten years of being bullied by other people and now I'm bullying myself. Seriously. <laughs> I need to get out of this. Um, also, he mentioned to me the term the wounded healer um actually when i did my degree it was in psychology and since i was 13 i wanted to be a psychologist and i said you know i want to help people um i mean back then i didn't know anything about mental health so I just, you know it's only stuff i read in books and you need the experience really you can't just read a book and suddenly you're great at this because you know the facts or whatever um but yeah, he said, I'm the wounded healer because I want to heal other people, even though I'm wounded myself, you know. And with my suicidal feelings, because um, we were talking about why I haven't attempted. Um, and I say, because I live with my parents and I've got a cat, as you saw before. And I suppose he's a bit of responsibility for me. I feel like I have to be there for him and I don't want to worry my parents. Um, anything like that so um, the mental health nurse referred to that as my parents and my cat are protective factors so I'm keeping myself alive with them 
and I'm not really opening up properly to them because I don't want to worry them, I don't want to add to their problems. Yeah, but oh no, it's, it was a good session, you know, it's, um, I didn't mention everything I wanted to, but in an hour, with my mind, with all the thoughts in it and all the issues and stuff in the past and that, I couldn't possibly fit it all into an hour. So, yeah, I suppose that's for next time. And overall, I've, I've got a good feeling about this, you know, I think I'll go for that interpersonal therapy, um, stick with that, um, well, therapist as well. Um, and see how it goes because it feels so different to previous um, therapy that I've been through that maybe that's a good thing. Okay, so um, my next vlog might be about my next therapy session because I kind of want to vlog about each session to tell you how it's going, whether I'm feeling good about it how I'm feeling at the time because I want to be quite candid and open with you. So uh, that's it I think. I uh, hope I haven't rambled too much. <laughs> I feel like I have but <laughs> yeah. So thank you for watching this. It's been quite a long vlog. Sorry about that. I do go on a bit. <laughs> So I will see you next time in maybe a couple of weeks. Okay.